how to overcome the flesh as a Christian. Just know that we cannot cast out the flesh, so we must crucify the flesh. Romans 7, 18, I just want to read this. For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, nothing good dwells. For to will is present with me, but how to perform what is good, I do not find. Let me tell y'all, there is a law that our flesh is evil, that anything our flesh produces is corrupt. And we're going to read that as we get into the scriptures and just know that it's not always the devil. It's not always the devil. So we can't be blaming the devil for everything that goes wrong in our life. It might be our flesh. And it is a nature that we're stuck with as long as we're here on earth. It's our flesh. So we need to understand how to really crucify this thing. So the flesh, it has the ability to actually control us. So we either submit to God or we submit to the flesh. Today in the pod, we're going to be reading Galatians 5. I'm going to share about the main categories of the flesh and really expose this on a deeper level. And then we're going to talk about it in Romans and how to also overcome this. So I'm going to give you guys at the end of this five keys on how to overcome the flesh. Let's read in Galatians 5, just getting started. It says, I say then walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another so that you do not do the things that you wish. Again, you're either submitting to God or you're submitting to your own flesh. And how to be able to overcome that, it tells us in Galatians 5 to what? Walk in the spirit. Walk in the spirit. And how do we actually do that? How do we overcome this nature of the flesh that, and, and again, we've inherited that sinful nature from what Adam and Eve did, but we can't blame them because we got the blood of Jesus. Jesus came. The cross is actually the solution. This is how we're able to overcome the flesh. But it's up to us to decide to overcome it, to deny ourselves, okay? Let's talk about the four main categories of the flesh according to Galatians 5. And I'm going to start at verse 19. Let me just read 19 to 21. And then we're going to go into the different categories of the works of the flesh. Galatians 5, 19 to 21. Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries, and the like of which I tell you beforehand, just as I told you in time past, the, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Wow. You know, when I used to look at that, will not inherit the kingdom of God, I used to look at it as, wow, if I, have, if I ever do any of these things, will I ever inherit the kingdom of God? It's like, hey, if you practice these things, you're not going to be able to inherit. And to inherit something means I got access. So you are accessing things of the kingdom above. Okay. Every kingdom has a king. And if I obey that king, I may have access to the things that he rules over that kingdom. <laughs> I mean, that's really what the Bible's about. It's about a king, a kingdom, and how we're able to operate through that and have access to it. And we won't inherit the things of the kingdom of God if we continue to practice the things of the flesh. It's deep, y'all. So let's talk about the four uh, categories. Let me just name the different categories and then I'm going to expose it as it's named here in Galatians 5, 19 to 21. We'll kind of categorize them. The first one is sexual impurity. The second one is occults. The third one is pride. And the fourth one is self-indulgent. Okay? So number one, sexual impurity is adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lewdness. And again, when I think about this, I see that this is what a lot of people struggle with. It's the very first couple things that is named in Galatians about the works of the flesh. It has to do with our sexual impurity. So you know what this is showing me? Our sexual impurity is one of those things that get attacked because when a promise of God is launched, the enemy tries to pervert the promises of God, right? The enemy always comes in a form of perversion to really twist the truth and twist the promise that God has for his children. And one of them is through sexual impurity. And this is why a lot of people deal with that. Again, adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lewdness. And if you go deeper, there's so many different things 
around that category that still leads to sexual impurity as you continue to study the word of God. So the first category of the works of the flesh that gets attacked is our sexual impurity. Okay. Number two, and you keep reading in verse 20. Number two is occults. Occults, which is to idolatry and sorcery. All that idolatry is, y'all, idolatry is anything that I put above God. So one of the attacks that the enemy uses is, uh, is anything that we put above God. Once we put it above God, it becomes an idol. And then it says sorcery. Okay, so this is occults. Sorcery, another version, I, I read out in New King James, another version in King James, instead of sorcery, it's called witchcraft. And we study witchcraft, we study sorcery. So to understand just that sorcery or witchcraft, it comes from the Greek word, which is pharmakia, which has to do with pretty much drug culture, anything to do with, with man-made things, okay? So anything that has to do with satisfying my flesh through also the use of drugs is known as sorcery. Pharmakia is that Greek word. And then I, I could put these things above God. Anything you put above God is idolatry, and that's linked to the occults. Idolatry could be your bank account. Idolatry could be your marriage, your relationship, your spouse. You put that above God. Idolatry could be social media. It could be anything, okay? Anything we put above God. The second category is occults. This is another attack of the works of the flesh that the enemy uses. And yes, it is our flesh because of our, our nature, but also the enemy can use these things to tempt us to fulfill what we call the lust of the flesh because a lot of these things that's the lust of the flesh that's in the world, you love the world, you're going to be able to submit and you might submit to the things of the lust of the flesh. Do not love the world. That's in Epistle of John. Okay. Number three, the third category of the works of the flesh is pride. Narrowed it down to pride. And you'll read it here. Pride is in, let's just keep reading in verse 20. Hatred, contentions, jealousies, outburst of wrath. Lord, Lord. Selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy. All stems from pride. Anything that has to do with self-glorification. Anything that has to do, and remember, being prideful, one example is just saying, God, I'm going to put this in your hand, but I'm also going to check what I put in your hand because I can't trust you with it, so I have to check on it. When you've given it to God, instead of me operating out of control and say, Lord, I put this in your hand, but I'm trying to control the situation, that can come from a seed of pride. And you see that jealousy, outbursts of wrath, murder, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy. Anything that has to do with self-glorification can come from pride. That's something this, the, the flesh does to us, okay? It's part of our nature. Number three, the category is pride. Last category of the works of the flesh, number four, is self-indulgent. It is self-indulgent. And we read this in verse 21, in Galatians 5, 21. Drunkenness, revelries. These are examples, self-indulgence. So anything that I, if you look at just drunkenness in general, it's just overconsumption, right? You get drunk when you consume a lot of alcohol. So it's self-indulgence, things that you ever get that place, even gluttony can be self-indulgent because when we start to put food, like let's say you're going through something in your life, a situation, a certain problem, some people, they reach for food to comfort them rather than, than Christ to comfort them. So you guys see how self-indulgent can just consume, overly consume things that we think is a remedy to our peace, our comfort, when that's really our peace is found in him. Our comfort's found in him. We're looking for natural remedies, which only a spiritual, uh, spiritual answer can fulfill, but not a natural remedy. It has to be a supernatural. It has to be a spiritual thing and that comes from Christ. That comes from his spirit. Even though we might be dealing with this and thinking it's it's natural, it's actually spiritual. Okay? And then closing off, it says, those that practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. When I practice any of these things, in those moments, I don't have access to the kingdom of God. There's repentance. There's the Holy Spirit that can help us overcome this. So how do I overcome the works of the flesh? How do I do it? The cross is the solution. 
the cross is the solution. Because I really want us to break down where the warfare is coming from and how to combat that. And Apostle Paul reveals this in Romans uh, in Romans 7, 13. It says this, Has then what is good become death to me? Certainly not, but sin, that it might appear sin, was producing death in me through what is good, so that sin through the commandment might be exceedingly sinful. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. Know that the flesh, okay, the flesh allows us to fulfill the fulfilling the lust of the flesh, but allows us to be in, in slavery, in bondage to sin because of our flesh, which again, it says, but I am carnal, sold under sin. Verse 15, for what I am doing, I do not understand for what I will to do that I do not practice, but what I hate that I do. If then I do what I will not to do, I agree with the law that it is good. But now it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells in me. Wow. For I know, verse 18, that in me, that is in my flesh, nothing good dwells. For that will is present with me, but how to perform what is good, I do not find. Verse 19, for the good that I will to do, I do not do. But the evil I will not to do, that I practice. Now, if I do what I will not to do, it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells in me. This flesh that is constantly warring, that's why it tells us in Galatians 5, we're constantly warring sin or against the flesh, the spirit and the flesh. And the, the flesh wants to sin. The spirit wants to glorify God. The sin wants or the flesh wants to glorify self. When it comes from the flesh, it glorifies me. It glorifies self. When it comes from the spirit, the he who is within me, it glorifies God. Okay. And this is really a deep teaching on Romans 7 with the evil that is always present with us. And that is the flesh. And in the flesh, nothing good dwells. And it is in bondage it is a slave to sin when we continue to fulfill that stuff but god always has an answer fam and i pray that we get deeper when it comes to these revelations because it's so much more deeper on how to be able to overcome this okay we're coming to it we're getting to it i'm giving you all the answer right here according to scripture verse 20 now if i do what i will not to do it is no longer i who do it but the sin that dwells in me i find then a law that is that evil is present with me the one who wills to do good. Verse 21, there is a law that is always present with us. What is that? What is always present with us? It is our flesh. I find then a law that is always present with me. What is that? Our flesh, right? Think about this. Let's go a bit deeper. It talks about a law. God has created laws. The law of sowing and reaping. If you sow good, you will reap good. If you sow bad, you will reap bad. The law of gravity. If you fall off a three-story home or building, you will reap what gravity has over you at the bottom of that. You will have gravity working because it is a law that God has created. God has created these laws that are inevitable because it is a law of God. God is not a man that he should, he should lie. He is truth. So he created these things. And one of those laws in verse 21 I find then a law that evil is present with me. There is a law that evil is always present with me. And what is that? It is my flesh. I'm here in the flesh that as long as we're here until Jesus Christ comes back, we will be living in this flesh. Okay. Verse 22, for I delight in the law of God according to the inward man. I like that. I delight in the laws of God according to the inward man. That inward man, the he that is within me. Verse 23, but I see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. Here comes another law that is being exposed, revealed to us. It is a law that is warring against the law of my mind. I see another law in my members that is warring against the law of my mind. There is a law that something continues to war against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. So when something is warring against my mind, when something is warring against my thoughts, 
it brings me into captivity to the law of sin. Wow. Which is in my members. So there is a law that is constantly warring against our the law of our mind. Right? So this is something we can't stop. It's just happening. Okay? And then verse 24, O wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? I thank God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So then with the mind, I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. Here's the answer, family. Here is the answer in verse 25. Yes, we understand there is a law that is warring against the law in my mind. There is a law that present that that evil is always present with me. There is a law that what I sow, I reap. There is a law that gravity, when I fall off a three-story or a two-story building, I will reap what gravity is because of the law. Okay? But he says this in verse 25, I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with the mind, I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. Here is the answer, family. I must submit my mind to Christ because there is a law that it says, with the mind, I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. When I serve my flesh, I fall into the law of sin. When I serve my, when I submit my mind to God, I serve God through the law of God. I submit myself and serve to the law of God. Two more laws, the law of God and the law of sin. And in order for me to be able to serve the law of God and reap the things of God, because everything that God created was good, it was a promise, but the enemy perverts it. When I submit my mind to God, family, I'm giving y'all the keys right here. When I submit my, my mind to God, I can break free from the law of sin. I can break free from the flesh-like nature that I have inherited, that evil always dwells inside of me. When I submit myself to God, and not just myself, my mind. When I submit my mind to God, I reap the law of God. When I allow the flesh to submit to itself, I reap the law of sin. That's Romans 7, 25, fam. I pray that you got this revelation because it's deeper than what we can understand in the moment sometimes. And it took me years to understand this, to read this, to meditate on this. And then just the other day, it just clicked. I said, wow, praise the Lord. If I submit my mind to Christ, I'm able, able to serve God and be under the law of God versus serving myself and my flesh and be under the law of sin, which allows me to fulfill corrupt desires, which allows me to fulfill my sinful nature, which allows me to serve a thing that is not the Lord. It serves myself. It glorifies flesh and allows me not to inherit the kingdom of God because those that practice the lust of the flesh will not inherit the kingdom of God. So you're either serving God or serving yourself, your flesh. Wow. I feel the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. I thank God through Jesus Christ, our Lord, that so then with the mind, I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. Remember, anything the flesh produces is corrupt. So what is the solution? What is the solution? I'm called because I know I can't cast out my flesh. I got to crucify this thing. And I had the authority because of what Jesus did on the cross. The cross is the solution to be able to overcome the flesh. I'm going to leave y'all with five things, five keys on how to be able to crucify the flesh. Five keys. Key number one, decide. Key number one is I must decide to crucify the flesh. Galatians 2.20, I've been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. You have to decide that Christ is living in you. You have to decide to crucify the flesh. And the life which I, la I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. You have to decide to crucify the flesh. And here's the thing, y'all. When Jesus nailed himself to the, when he got nailed on the cross, crucifying, crucifixion is not pretty. Crucifixion may hurt. Crucifixion isn't always exciting. It's not Instagrammable. It's not something you pl put on the pl platform sometimes. I once heard that if you can crucify your flesh privately, then your flesh won't crucify you publicly. Decide to crucify the flesh. Number two, 
deny yourself. You must deny yourself. Remember, we understand that nothing good inside of us dwells inside of us. This is in Romans 7. Okay? That evil is always present with us and nothing good dwells in the flesh because it produces corrupt things. Deny yourself is number two. Luke 9, 23. Then Jesus said to them all, if anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. Learn how to deny yourself. Denying yourself doesn't mean denying the things, the good things that God has placed inside of you. Denying yourself is being able to de deny the things that the flesh wants to fulfill in your life. Do not fulfill the lust of the flesh. You must walk in the spirit, Galatians 5, 16, so you don't fulfill the lust of the flesh. Number two is I got to deny myself. Number three, you must present your bodies a living sacrifice. You must present your bodies a living sacrifice. Romans 1 or Romans 12, 1 and 2. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. How do I present my body as a living sacrifice? It gives us the answer in the next part of this verse. Holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. In order for me to present myself as a living sacrifice, it's me being able to make decisions that are holy, being holy just means to be making decisions that are set apart from this world that are acceptable to God, which is my reasonable service. So God needs to accept it. It needs to be acceptable to God's eyes because God is holy. God is mighty. God is sovereign. God is good all the time and all the time God is good. Is this acceptable to God in my decisions that I'm making? So number three on crucifying the flesh is to present your bodies a living sacrifice. Number four. How to crucify the flesh, how to overcome the flesh as a follower of Christ, God's word, God's word. In Matthew 4, 4, Jesus was being tempted in the wilderness by the enemy. And what Jesus did was he spoke God's word right back to the enemy because God's word has power. It says in Matthew 4, 4, but Jesus answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of the living God. God's word. Psalms chapter one tells us that we have to meditate on his word day and night. Psalm 119, it says that his word is a lamp onto our feet and a light onto our path. It gives us a, a light to, to be able to know, to justify that this is good soil. This is good ground. That's the righteous path. That's the narrow path. God's word, David, the psalmist David said, he says, thy word I have hidden in my heart so that I may not sin against God. So I might not sin against you, O Lord. God's word. God's word breaks the cravings of the nature of the flesh. God's word, family. There's so much I can share about God's word. Okay. And then that's number four on how to overcome the flesh. Last thing, number five. How do I overcome the flesh as a follower of Christ? It's submitting our mind to Christ. I got to submit my mind to Christ. We saw that in Romans 7, that if I submit my mind to Jesus, if I submit my mind to God, I reap the benefits of the law of God, Romans 7, 25, okay? So I have to submit my mind to Christ, this thing, because this is where the war zone's at. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3 to 5, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but are mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments in every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ and being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. I'm telling y'all, this is such a rich teaching today because we just talked about submitting our thoughts and our mind and meditating on those things. When I meditate on God's word, it's renewing my mind. It's renewing my thoughts. It's re resurfacing old things and allowing those things to get pushed out, allowing me to get cleansed and allowing God to put his truth. If I fill my mind up with God's truth, the enemy has no room for his lies. Submit your mind to Christ is how to overcome the flesh. Hallelujah. Praise God, family. We made it. We made it until the end. If you guys have been enjoying this pod, God bless you. Thanks so much for being part of this and going through all this. We have so many different episodes, a lot of teaching 
and a lot of fruitfulness that I know this will really birth and help others that really need practical advice, step by steps on how to be able to live a life for Christ, renewing of the mind and being able to be somebody that God wants to use because you're called as an instrument. You're called as a vessel to be able to be used by the, the potter and you are the clay, it tells us in Isaiah. Amen. Go ahead, tap in. If you guys are on the pod, leave us a rating. That would help. It'll, it'll, it only takes a few seconds if you're on any of the streaming platforms. Like this. Subscribe to our community if you're on the tube. God bless you so much. Rocking the merch right here. Jehovah merch. Praise the Lord. I'll link all the show notes in the description below. I look forward to seeing you guys in the next episode. How to overcome the lust of the flesh and to make sure that, hey, is this the flesh or is this really the devil? Amen. God bless you. I'll see you guys in the next one. In Jesus' name. Take care simply on Cage Fam. Bye-bye.